About a year and a half ago, I found out that I have Usher syndrome. Usher syndrome is a rare genetic disorder which has a variety of types, all of which include hearing loss and retinitis pigmentosa. Retinitis pigmentosa is the degeneration of the light receptors in the retina, leading to progressive night blindness and slowly shrinking peripheral vision. I have always had a mild to moderate hearing loss, and as for vision, my decline is very slow. Currently, the only thing obstructing my daytime vision is floaters and occasional strobe lights when there is a shift in the brightness of a room. Initially, I felt very removed from this diagnosis. I could hear and see the same as any day before. My parents were devastated, but I chose to ignore it. Usher's isn't something you can tell by looking at a person, so I told myself there was no reason to tell anyone else about it. My denial could only last for so long. Eventually, I found myself isolated by the situation. Usher's syndrome affects around four in 100,000 people, and it felt as if I had hit the worst lottery ever. My favorite activities appeared in jeopardy. How was I supposed to walk around downtown or go to art museums? with declining vision. How long would it be until I couldn't read a book? I had just taken the first segment of driver's ed and it seemed pointless to continue. My independence seemed to be slipping away before I had the chance to experience it. But luckily that summer, I realized I didn't have to live in isolation. My family and I took a road trip to Iowa where I had more eye appointments and my doctor saw several Usher's patients a day. Suddenly, the issue wasn't so abnormal or weird. We even talked about the hope there is for a cure. The next month, we attended the Usher Syndrome Coalition Conference, where I met other people with Usher's, from people in high school, to a guy in law school, to Ivy League graduates, and people who had been through the entire process of the condition. They all demonstrated to me that academic goals and happiness did not need to be sacrificed over a diagnosis. I realized that I had decades to work through my reading list and that everything was still in motion. Time continued to pass and I chose to live in the moment rather than for an unclear future. At this point, I finally decided to talk to my friends about ushers. A few of them reacted with pity which is a very easy and instinctual reaction. One person asked me if I'd rather just not talk about it at all. Clearly, I have a lot to say. It's important to talk about disability so that it's not a topic shrouded in mystery or fear. And while it can be difficult to talk about disability with loved ones, we must avoid pity. Instead, try reflective listening, where you respond to the tone and body language of the person speaking. This way, you will understand and be able to react appropriately. And the person speaking, most importantly, will feel heard. There isn't a simple sentence structure that I can offer you that solves everything. But if a person speaks of their disability without sadness, don't patronize them. And if I make a joke about not being able to hear something, you're allowed to laugh. Respond to the person in the way that provides them respect. Develop your natural response from sympathy to empathy. Another person asked me, have you ever actually experienced any adversity due to disability? And I understand where the question comes from. We live in a town with strong resources and disabilities don't seem to be an issue. But disability rights aren't taken seriously. There's a lack of expectation for people with disabilities to succeed. And while people with disabilities are extremely capable, not treated as such. Once, while working on a group project, a girl mentioned to me how at a store she had a deaf cashier. She said the woman spoke with an accent and that she made her uncomfortable with it. She said that because of the woman's accent, she shouldn't have had the job at all. And while the girl in my group didn't realize it, this is unacceptable. In 2016, Michigan had just a 31% employment rate for people with disabilities. This terrible rate of employment is not due to lack of talent or drive on behalf of people with disabilities, but instead due to the preconceptions that people have. 
We should all hold each other, one another accountable for success, no matter our physical makeup. We, every person is capable of accomplishing goals, but we do it in different ways. Whether it's a cane or a guide dog or closed captions or a ramp, accommodations are a right and not a privilege. Too often are people with disabilities ashamed of asking for the things that they need in order to succeed for fear of embarrassing themselves or inconveniencing others. Too frequently are people with invisible disabilities brushed off as looking healthy. Accommodations cannot be given up though. They make life easier and enjoyable. Before my hearing aids, I had no interest in music. It just sounded like a bunch of sounds. But with them, that's completely changed. I love listening to music and playing my flute and band. And accommodations designed for one group benefit people far beyond them. Spell check was originally designed for people with dyslexia, but I'm sure we've all benefited from that. Maybe even this morning when you sent a text and a word autocorrected. In an even broader sense, we don't see perfectly at night. So we have street lamp to illuminate the way. We all interact with the spaces around us differently. So we all need different tools to navigate it fairly. In 1975, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act was passed to ensure that students with disabilities receive the same opportunities in public schools as other students. It introduced the idea of the least restrictive environment, which placed students with disabilities in general education classes rather than separated and limited environments. This greatly expanded education for people with disabilities. But the system is still flawed. 28% of people with disabilities age 25 or older have less than a high school education. We must all be aware of how the spaces around us can become more accessible. I've had my hearing aids since uh, before I entered kindergarten but it took until the middle of my senior year for a counselor to suggest setting up a 504 plan, which is essentially an agreement between the student and the teachers on how to best accommodate a disability within a classroom. This varies from student to student and can be anything from extended time on test to speech therapy. Mine is simple. I typically ask to sit in the front of the classroom so that I can hear the teacher but I do still miss comments, especially those made behind me by my peers. The 504 plan just lets my teacher know that anything not spoken towards me should be repeated. Students with disabilities are asked to do a great deal of self-advocacy, and this makes sense in that every person will have individualized needs, but it also places a burden on the student when there's not a network of support around them. Rather than be frustrated with our limitations, we should celebrate our abilities. When we exclude others, we delay the progress of us all. Usher syndrome has taught me to no longer live for one day, but instead for today. There are many aspects of our lives that are out of our control, but we all have the power to make the most of what today has brought us. So I ask you to speak up. If someone cannot hear you, speak up. If necessary accommodations are not provided for yourself or others, speak up. And if you can advocate for disability rights, speak up. Thank you.